Hi guys, welcome back to our video review channel. Today we'll be reviewing Samyang lenses. Samyang is a Korean brand that manufactures lenses for the lower end market. Uh, they're very affordable and have a very good picture quality. They also are marketed with different brand names such as Vivitar, Opteca or Wallimax. I've used a lot of lenses throughout my career and these lenses come at a very, very cheap price. But does that mean that they will give you a cheap shot? Let's have a closer look. The fisheye effect is in essence an extreme barrel distortion. That means that you're getting a very wide field of view. This lens is designed for APS-C camera types, like the 7D. Fish-eye lenses are ultra-wide angle. We are nearly getting 180 degree angles of view here. Generally, wide angle lenses have the corners corrected as much as possible to give you straight lines. But this fisheye lens is deliberately left so that the edges distort in order to get a creative effect. It's built very, very well. For the most part of the body is made out of metal. So it's really resistant and tough. The focus ring is very smooth and could easily compete with top lenses from other brands. You will have the aperture ring directly on the lens. It's going from 3.5 to 22. You won't be able to control the aperture from your camera though. But this isn't a deal breaker. The biggest drawback of this lens is that you will have to adjust the focus manually as it doesn't have an autofocus compatibility with your camera body. Anyways, this is not something that should scare you away, as when you are shooting with this lens, even at 3.5, everything will look pretty focused anyway. The image quality is excellent. If you shoot at 3.5, the image might appear murky and not very sharp with some ghosting. The sweet spot for this lens will be at f5.6, where the image will become very sharp from corner to corner with very little chromatic aberration. If you're shooting at night, you will need to ramp up your ISO though. The only downside I would see is that you don't have a filter tray on this lens and it would be a very worthy addition as generally for such wide angle lenses you would find it at the back. Overall, it's a great artistic lens with a fantastic picture quality if you're shooting at 5.6. Usually we don't use fisheye lenses a lot as they have a lot of distortion. But for the price range here, I believe it's a worthy addition in your camera bag. This lens is fun to use, sharp, incredibly well built and I highly recommend it as it will make you see the world from a different angle of view and possibly make you see the world a bit differently. The 14mm f2.8 This ultra wide angle rectilinear lens is really amazing. The only other lens that you will find and that is 14mm is Canon f2.8 L series. It's very cheap in comparison and it's a worthy option as it's half or even the third of the price of other similar lenses on the market. The lens cap is absolutely fantastic. Someone finally managed to create a lens cap that can stay on the lens for such a wide angle lens. If we compare it to Canon's, it's always falling in your camera bag and you can get your lens scratched easily since it has this huge bulging in the front. The cap looks very cheap though and plasticky but it suits its purpose. Again, we have a manual aperture ring and a manual focus only. The focus is buttery smooth. So if you're shooting video, you will be delighted as it has a very long focus throw to it. You can be very precise with this ring. I wish I could say the same for the aperture ring. It feels a bit more plasticky than the focus ring. Regarding the images, for video it has half stops and the focus is really smooth. The aperture is controlled manually once again and ranges from 2.8 to f22. For photographers it is going to be difficult to use it in manual mode and it will definitely be testing your patience. But overall this lens has surpassed my expectations and I highly recommend it. It is heavy and has a metallic build to it. But if you want to shoot wide and have less distortion than the 8mm, this would be the lens to go for. So the 35mm from Sam Young here is again designed for full frame. The best thing on this lens is the maximum aperture. It can reach 1.4 uh, 
um, and that's absolutely great for this focal length. Uh, the coating on the lens is very good. It, it is minimizing all the reflections that you might get, which sometimes is good, sometimes is bad, but overall the coating is absolutely stunning. Um, again, the thing that I would find as a drawback here on this lens is a little bit its weight. Uh, it's 660 grams. For this 35 mm 1.4, uh, it is using a system that they call the floating uh, system for lenses that is allowing to preserve high image quality with minimum focus distance. Again, I feel that for photography users, the biggest drawback is not being able to have the autofocus function. But again, for filmmakers, I think it's absolutely great as you have all the markings on the side of the lens, uh, which means you will be able to pull focus easily and the build of this lens is very very good it feels rock solid uh, once of course you remove the plastic cap uh, and i think you'll have great fun using this lens the 85 mm f 1.4 it's a very good looking lens lightweight i shall say if you compare this one with the canon 85 it's twice as light that alone may not be overly special, but an ultra-large aperture 85mm 1.4 lens sold for only $300 certainly is. Just for comparison, the Canon EF 85mm 1.2 sells for more than $2,000. Sounds insane, doesn't it? Well, let's have a closer look at this piece of glass. Upon first contact, you will experience two immediate drawbacks. The lens does not offer autofocus mode, so that means you have to focus manually, either by checking the viewfinder image or by using live view. The aperture is not controlled by the camera, but directly on the lens using an aperture ring just like back in the old days. The aperture will also stop down immediately, so the optical viewfinder will show you a darker image at smaller aperture settings. Now, apart from these shortcomings, what are you getting for so few bucks? Well, surprisingly, quite a bit. The build quality is nothing short of excellent thanks to a combination of metal and good quality plastic parts. The lens puts many of the genuine manufacturer's products to shame here actually. There's no wobbling whatsoever. The focus ring operates as smooth as silk and the aperture ring has distinctive clicks. The lens features an internal focusing IF mechanism so the physical size remains constant during focusing and the big front element does not rotate. Now, what about the images? Ultra-large aperture lenses tend to have some vignetting problems on full-format cameras. The Samyang shows an edge deterioration of 1.2.8 EV at 1.4. This is hefty in absolute terms, but relative to similar lenses, this is actually quite well controlled. The problem is still visible at f2, but it's basically gone from f2.8 onwards. All in all, a very good characteristic. But the bokeh, the quality of the out-of-focus blur, is the primary aspect for this Samyang. And it does a really good job here. In fact, the quality of out-of-focus highlights is pretty much perfect, at least at f1.4 and f2. There is only a tendency of producing ellipsoid-shaped highlights in the corners, but no cat's eyes. The lens has no circular aperture blades, and the more angled projection gets somewhat more visible from f2.8 onwards. The quality of the general blur is very good as well. The Samyang 85mm 1.4 aspherical may not be the sharpest lens around, but it offers a good and very affordable introduction into shallow depth of field photography and videography. I think it's a very good lens that could take its place in your camera bag and be very useful in any assignment that you might have, especially if you're shooting video. These set of lenses are highly recommended for the price range and quality that you're getting out of them. See you soon for another video review.